The Koch brothers have created a massive political infrastructure that rivals that of the Republican Party, and we're only now beginning to see how extensive it really is. The latest piece of this puzzle shows that the Kochs have created a network to spy on progressive organizations, and I have Howard Nations with me now to tell us what's happening. Howard, we've known for a long time the Koch brothers, they've put together just this whole, they essentially are their own political party. They've got yeah. the, the voting database, they've got the list of registered voters, they've got all kinds of everything, but now, now we're starting to learn about some of the really, really creepy things that they are doing uh, with this, I guess you'd call it this Coke intelligence network. Right. How did this begin? I mean, why are they now collecting intelligence? What started all this? Well, Farron, this all began in 2012 when the Koch brothers spent $400 million plus attacking policies and attacking Democratic politicians. And despite that, Obama won a second term. Democrats kept the, uh, kept the Senate. They took losses pretty much across the board. They did a forensic audit, and their forensic audit concluded that they had gotten outwitted by the left on the airwaves, in the data war, and on the ground. So the Koch brothers' response is to create this competitive intelligence team, which is designed to infiltrate and spy on the left. Now what they've done is they've added a new level to the political structure. We've always had candidate research, candidate versus candidate, then you got party campaign committees, then you got in individual donor organizations, but now we have a new level, which is a sub rosa intelligence level. And basically, it's the Freedom Partners Chamber of Commerce, which is a Koch organization on the right, and the Democracy Alliance on the left. Well, you know, we've, we've seen instances uh, uh, about probably about 10 years ago we had the U.S. Chamber of Commerce sending, uh, uh, you know, intelligence groups out to spy on uh, progressive journalists, uh, bloggers. Uh, our good friend Brad Friedman uh, was one of the people right. targeted by them. Uh, they used a company I believe was called H.B. Gary. So now the Koch brothers have kind of taken that concept and they've put it on steroids. They say, look, we've got to get out there and not just watch what they're doing. We need, essentially, we need a man on the inside. We got to yep. figure out their plans, and so we can thwart them before they even have a chance to to enact them. I mean, this is it, it's comical because it seems like something you'd see in a bad movie, but this is real life. I mean, this is happening right now, isn't it? Yes, they have a staff of twenty five people, including a former CIA analyst, uh, and their purpose is to thwart liberal groups and and activists. Uh, and, and also to identify what they regard as threats to the Koch brothers' network. Their method is to research their opponents. They do deep diving into the data. They discover plans and methods for democratic voter mobilization, democratic canvassing, and democratic phone banking. And they're concerned particularly by voter registration and the success that labor unions and environmentalists had uh, in, in getting democratic voters registered and to the polls. So they've sought to access uh, technology and the techniques of the Democratic uh, field uh, personnel that were so successful in 2012 against them. And so this all started because they were, uh, I guess, just sore losers from the 2012 election that their, you know, four or five hundred million dollars couldn't buy them every single election. I mean, they had success across the board at the local level in 2012 right. and in 2014. Right. So, so is it is it just never enough for them? They always have to get everything. I mean, is that what's happening? Well, they are literally doubling down because one purpose of the intelligence team is so that the Koch brothers can determine how to best spend 889 million on policies and politicians. Uh, by the November 2016 election. So they're trying to learn from 2012, but they're trying to double down by spending twice as much money. Do we have any idea, uh, any particular groups or anything, where they're, uh, you know, uh, uh, targeting, I guess, right now? Or is this just kind of an across the board, we're going to learn everything about everybody? Well, <clears throat> they're targeting the their standard uh, competition, but <clears throat> they're, they're targets, targeting the Demo Democracy Alliance uh, because what they've got, and, and Democracy Alliance is, is formed for the same reason, 
that the Koch brothers have their organization, they, they don't have to follow the, the rules of political parties. Uh, there are no five-figure limits, there are no donor disclosures, there are no campaign finance laws, there are no party rules, no concerned party leaders, no media scrutiny, uh, no allegiance to one candidate. If they don't like the candidate, if they're not doing well, they just move over to another one. But the, the Koch brothers are more concerned with policy than they are with candidates. Uh, so they think that unlimited cash with no donor disclosures and, and, a, and very few spending restrictions are the key as long as the Democrats don't do it better. And that's the problem in the past is that the Democrats have always done it better. Well, you know, and, and the Democrats, they do very well at campaigning. They sometimes not as well as they should, I guess. But we still, or I, we, the Democratic Party does not have this massive donor right. base that the Republicans do. I mean, we don't have a, a pair of brothers who say we're going to put close to $1 billion yeah into the election. So I guess the question really is, I mean, they want to spend almost a billion dollars. They're gathering information on as many liberal groups as they possibly can. They've bought elections from the local level, from dog catcher up to the White House. What are they so afraid of? I mean, what is their end game here? Well, their end game is really policy. Uh, politicians are just a necessary evil for them their means to an end to them achieve, to achieve their policy goals. David uh, ran as, uh, for vice president as a libertarian. Their father was a John Bircher. And in a recent uh, interview, David Koch expressed his disappointment at no change in policy despite the millions of dollars that they had spent and all the local elections that they had won. But the, the Koch brothers' policy goals are first to greatly reduce government, to abolish corporate regulation, particularly the Koch Brothers corporations, and to lower taxes on businesses, and they couch all their they couch everything in terms of free enterprise. But their biggest regulatory concern is the EPA. Uh, in free enterprise, they want to be free to remain as one of the world's largest polluters. And the way they achieve their goals is by opposing liberals, uh, particularly public sector unions, as they did in in uh, Wisconsin, for example the academics and the media elite, but their biggest single goal is to defeat the Demo uh, Democracy Alliance, which is a group of rich supporters of liberal causes who are not nearly as well funded as you say. That, that whole Democracy Alliance is not nearly as well funded as just the Koch brothers themselves. But this is their target uh, group of the Koch brothers so uh, and their competitive intelligence. Well, Howard, uh, you have spent your entire career, one of the most prominent trial lawyers in this country, you've spent your whole career, you know, fighting against uh, corporations who, who just run over uh, American consumers. And uh, you said one of the goals of the Koch brothers, obviously, is massive deregu deregulation and targeting the right. EPA. What have you seen from your career? What happens when corporations get that, when they get the deregulation, when they stop having the government checking over their shoulders to make sure they're cooperating with the law, what happens when they finally get their wish? Well, when they get their wish, we see it on our side as to all of the abuses of the system that are done. They will not play inside the rules. They don't want to color inside the lines. Once they get control, everything goes to hell, frankly. And, and we see the best interest of the public, the best interest of the middle class, uh, everything out there, aside from their own self-interest of, of corporations, are just set aside and they, they function solely for themselves. Now, you've got people on the other side, and I, you know, there's a clear choice here. To me, this, this could not not possibly be clear. You've got the Democratic Alli Democracy Alliance. Their goals are environmental protection, reducing carbon emissions, income equality, uh, reducing the role of money in politics, expanding voter access, supporting choice and abortion, supporting LGBT rights. The Koch brothers, their battle lines are clearly drawn because they oppose every single one of those things. And the new normal is, you know, there's nothing new in politics. Spy on opposition, uh, spying on your opposition, it reminds us of Watergate, uh, where opposition re research was carried to a felonious level there. But this is not some stupid break-in. This is the digital age where much more is possible and much more abuse is possible. But just to give you an example, uh, Farron, 
Hillary has already set up the American Bridge 21st century. So I think this may be the new normal. The purpose of that is they got $3 million, which is peanuts compared to the Koch brothers, but it's $3 million to spend on research and tracking and attacking the Koch brothers. So I think the bottom line is both sides are gaming the system, but there's a distinct difference. The Democracy Alliance is seeking to better the lives of the poor and the middle class, and the Koch brothers are seeking to increase their own personal power and to continue to function above the law. Howard Nations, thank you for telling us this story. It's certainly terrifying when you really understand what's happening right now in our electoral process and in America in general, but thank you very much for talking with us today. My pleasure, Farron. Thanks.